want to talk to you a moment from the popular thought, prayer changes things. And the text is found in the Gospel according to St. Luke. The 21st chapter. And the 22nd verse. Those of you who may have brought your good books with you, you may turn there with me. St. Luke, the 21st chapter, and the 22nd verse, the words of Jesus, all things that you ask in prayer, all things that you ask in prayer, believing, believing you shall, you shall receive. receive. You may be seated. I like this title, Prayer Changes Things. It's somewhat of a cliche. Those of you who write to me, you know that a few days ago I sent you a plaque to put on your wall that says, Prayer Changes Things. But there's a little twist that I add to this statement, and it's this. Prayer changes things because it changes me. Together, prayer changes things because it changes me. And I heard one minister make this beautiful statement. He said, I know that prayer changes things because I'm one of those things that prayer changed. <laughs> so many times when people pray, they pray to change other people and never think that they need to change themselves. But remember this, the first thing that prayer changes is the one who prays. And if your prayer does not change you, it's not going to change anybody else. If your prayer does not change you, it's not going to change anything else. Prayer changes things because it changes me. Together again, prayer changes things because it changes me. I would like to share this definition of prayer with you. There are many definitions for prayer, and this is not an exclusive definition, but here it is. Prayer is a mind-changing process. Together, prayer is a mind-changing process. And you see, prayer changes things because prayer is a mind-changing process. We go again to the famous words of the Apostle Paul. Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, or be you changed by changing your mind. Now, when you change your mind, from negative to positive, then other people and things will change. But if they don't change, you yourself will be so changed, it won't make any difference. All change begins with changing yourself. Every time you see somebody else that you want to change, stop and change yourself. Change your mind. And you see, prayer correctly understood is a mind-changing process. It, a, it is a process wherein we change the mind from negative to positive. It is a process wherein we change the mind from doubt to faith. It is a process wherein we change the mind from hate to love. And ladies and gentlemen, when you change your mind from doubt to faith, from fear to believing, from hate to love, then people are going to begin to change in your life and things are going to begin to change in your life. Again, I like this definition for prayer. 
Prayer is a positive mental transaction. Say that with me. Prayer is a positive mental transaction. That's an interesting definition for prayer. Let us look at the words of the Master Jesus again. All things that you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. My God, that is what I call carte blanche. Anything that you can ask in prayer and believe, you shall receive. Reminds me of the a story that I've told sometimes of, about the little lady that read in the Bible that if you believe, you can move mountains. And there was a mountain out behind her house. And so before going to bed that night, she got down on her knees and prayed and said, Now, Lord, I want you to move that mountain from behind my house. And she got in and covered up her ears in bed and went to sleep. Next morning when she woke up, she jumped out of bed, ran to the window, and threw up the shades. And she looked out the window and said, just like I thought. <laughs> you see, she, didn't, she did not believe her prayer in the first place. There are so many ways that prayer can change things by changing us. Prayer can change and maintain your health. That's a wonderful thing. And I want to say it more slowly and more deliberately because perhaps someone here today or someone watching by television needs a change in the condition of his health. Prayer can change and maintain your health. And I'm thinking now about a lady in Philadelphia that I'll never forget. And I wrote to you about her in one of my recent action magazines. I'll never forget this lady because I got two letters from this lady the same day. And I got both of them and read them both the same day. They were interesting. She wrote me this letter. She said, Reverend Ike, I was on my way out of my house going to the hospital for an operation for a tumor to have that tumor removed. And she said, as I got to the door and I was about to put my hand on the doorknob on the way to the hospital, she said, the Spirit spoke to me and said, stop. Go back and write Reverend Ike a letter and ask him to pray for you. Ask him to pray for your healing. Ask him to pray for your health. She said she dropped her bags that she was taking to the hospital with a nightgown and other things in it right on the floor in front of the door. And she hurried back into the house and picked up the first piece of paper that she could find. And hurriedly, she wrote me a letter, Dear Reverend Ike, with just three words, Pray for me. Can you say those three words with me? Pray for me. And she sealed that letter up and dropped it in the mailbox on her way to the hospital for the operation. Bless God when she got there to the hospital and they gave her the pre preliminary examination. The doctors couldn't find the tumor that they were supposed to take out. And they wondered what had happened and they let her go back home. And she got back home and wrote me the second letter that day, but it was a shouting letter that went something like this. Dear Reverend Ike, glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> she said, Reverend Ike, I just wrote you another letter today when I was on my way to the hospital for that operation to remove the tumor that the doctor said was in my body. And she told me what happened when she got there. And she said, Reverend Ike, somehow the other between the time that I wrote that letter and said, pray for me, God changed things in my body. Prayer changed things. And they couldn't find that tumor. And she didn't say much else except a whole page full of hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. But I think that was in order, don't you think so? Can I hear you say, pray for me? Pray for me. Glory, to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I say prayer changes things. I don't care what kind of condition it is. If you believe, prayer will change things. Not only will prayer change the condition of your health, but prayer will even change what some people call bad luck. People write to me about everything, and I don't care what you write to me about. If you feel that you need prayer because you want better luck, if you call it that, right. <laughs> like the man I told you about the other night that met me backstage in Atlanta while I was going out to get in the car. And, you know, he had been in a two-hour service, but he stood backstage and said to me on my way out, Reverend Ike, I want you to pray for me. I got bad luck. And there was even a song about that, you know, bad luck, bad luck, you know. And if you're about to lose your home, that's bad luck. You ain't got no money. God knows that's bad luck. I don't use the word luck very much, but if you feel you've got bad luck, I'll say prayer can change your luck. Say that with me. Prayer can change your luck. Because you see, prayer is communicating with the power of God in you. Prayer is communicating with the presence of God in you. Prayer is communicating with the reality of God in you. And let me tell you, when you establish contact with the God in you, things begin to happen. Can I get a loud amen? amen? I'm so very happy for the letters that we are getting from our prayer ministry now, particularly from those people who write for prayer for the healing of their bodies from cancer. We've got a number of those. Because today, that's such a scare in the world. When the doctor tells somebody you've got cancer, they almost die on the spot. As a matter of fact, it's probably at that point that many of them give up. And you know, if you give up, you're done. Thank God I can pray. Say that with me. Thank God I can pray. <laughs> now, I want the thousands of you here in this service to stand right now, and we're going to do some prayer-changing exercises. Come on. Around here, we don't simply give you the theory, but we tell you how to use it. Not only that, we give you practice in using it. I say that prayer changes things. Now, how many of you here today have something, some situation, some condition? I'm not going to ask you what it is. In most cases, it's private, but there's something in your life that you want changed. Just raise your hands. We're going to have prayer now. And not only are we going to use the power of prayer to change things, but we're going to use the power of prayer to maintain our good. You see, that's another thing, you know. You don't wait until you get sick to pray. Some people seem to think that prayer is something that you do only when things get bad. Oh, come on, talk back to me. <laughs> but let me tell you, prayer is a line of communication between you and the God in you that you should just keep busy. Yes, sir. Yes. All right. And you know, you don't have to be in any, in any special physical position when you pray. You can walk along and talk to God. Aren't you glad about that? While you're washing the dishes, you can talk to them. And, and, you know, I've got an interesting habit. If for some reason or the other I wake up in the night and it looks like I can't sleep for some reason, I just push up in the bed and talk to God. You see, prayer is something that you can do anytime, anywhere. Riding down the road, you can talk to God. While you're on your job, you can talk to God. Yes. How many of you ever talk to God? Yes. And you don't have to be formal about it. Yes. You can be down to the point about it. Yes. Like the lady who came from Bakersfield, California to Los Angeles the other day to give her testimony. 
She said that she had raised a house full of children, and she was now up in her 70s. And she said all of her life they had been poor. And while she was sitting there one day in her poverty, she decided she'd talk to God about it. And she made a prayer that may sound strange to some of you. But she prayed like this. She said, God, I know you got some money. <laughs> oh, come on now. I'm talking about prayer that gets right down to the real nitty gritty. You see, and this is why some of you don't get an answer to your prayer because you don't get right down to the real nitty gritty. You go around the block. Now, Lord. I know you this and I know you that. But this lady got right down to the real nitty gritty. She said, God, I know you've got some money. She said, and you give me some. <laughs> and for the first time in her life, a few days after that, she received a lump sum of $10,000. Now, you can call that a nitty-gritty prayer if you want. So we are going to get down to some nitty-gritty here in our prayers for the next few moments. And I don't usually pray like most people pray either. I pray like that old song says, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. The reason some of you don't get what you want is because you don't tell him what you want. Listen how some people pray. Lord, I want you to help me if you please. Lord, I want you to help me if it is your will. But I like that old lady's prayer. Lord, I know you've got money. Give me some. <laughs> Somebody better write that down in your heart and you'd better start using it. I like people who get down to the real nitty gritty. I remember I had a meeting in San Francisco, California, talking about prayer and belief. And this lady brought her sister in a wheelchair from a few hundred miles away. And I saw her pushing this lady up to the front in this wheelchair. I says, now where is this, this lady going? Here I am up here preaching and she's pushing this lady up here in this wheelchair. Where are they going? So she finally got her sister up there in front of me in the wheelchair. And she stood in front of her sister and she said, honey, she said, you told me to bring you here to Reverend Ike. <laughs> and she said, honey, you said that if I brought you here to Reverend Ike that you would walk. <laughs> she said, come on, baby, walk. <laughs> what do you think she did? Yes, she did. She walked. And I want to be purposely redundant about this. In your prayers, get right down to the real nitty-gritty. Stop all this religious nonsense with God. You don't have to jive God. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want.